God will have us to be, how we live, how do you not worry, how to live a worry-free life. You almost ask somebody that, they'll think you crazy to tell them you ain't got to worry over things. Because it's so normal for people who don't know God, who haven't come to revelation truth from the word of God, to do what is normal. And it's normal when you don't have solutions or answers to problems. The next best thing that people think to do is what? Worry over it. That's right. But the, the, the definition for worry is to torment oneself or suffer from disturbing thoughts. Suffer from disturbing thoughts. Fret. That is fretting, to torment with cares, anxieties, to be tormented with cares and anxiety by many things. All right. So let's look now then <clears throat> uh, in Luke chapter 10. And we can lift, lift up from verse 38 of that book, Luke 10, 38. And we'll see something else that we believe that will be a blessing to us. Luke 10 and 38. All right. How to live a worry-free life. How do you do it? How do you do it? Well, Philippians told us the God of peace will guard our hearts and our minds. When you talk about your heart, it's talking about your spirit. Amen. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a physical body, the real you. That right? That's what the Bible teaches us. We are spirit beings having a soul living inside of a physical body. And Luke 10, 38, then let's look at this, this beautiful uh, illustration of how Jesus feels about people who are full of worry and anxiety and cares and fretting. Here we have Mary and Martha, Jesus and the and the gang, as it were, had just come from a crusade campaign. And now they're at uh, Mary and Martha's house uh, waiting to be served and fed. And the scripture says at verse 38, And Jesus and his disciples were on their way. They came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha, let's listen to what said about Martha. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. It didn't say she was taking care of the preparation. It said she was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. Thank you. All right. And so as a result of it, she felt like her sister should have been in there to help her out. You got it. And the normal thing would t would be that she go in there help her, but she was doing something more, way more important than serving at that moment. She was doing the needful thing. Everybody say the needful thing. You got to learn the priority of the needful thing is you're gonna, if you're going to live a worry free life as a believer. As I said, it's normal in our society to worry and fret over everything from sun up to sundown. And matter of fact, there are some people get mad at you if you don't worry with them because they'll say you don't care. But there is a way to care without getting full of anxiety, apprehension and fretting and all in a frustration with some. How many of you believe there's a better way to do it? It is. And it's God's way. You know, what is God's way? He said, rather than do that, pray about everything. Don't worry about anything. That's the God's way. Now, people don't like that, but I tell you this, it'll keep you looking better. It'll keep you young. <laughs> it'll, keep, it'll keep the wrinkles off your forehead and the gray hair out your head if you learn how to pray about everything and don't worry about what? Anything. Don't worry about anything. Now, you don't wake up overnight learning, knowing how to do this because your nature has been molded to worry because your society have taught you how to do it. Amen. And especially if you came out of family, you know, you got some families that are world champion warriors. Talk to me and hear somebody. They are world, that means they don't want all the trophies on it. And they'll get mad at you if you don't worry. Come in here and worry with me all night. 
You say, no, I'm going to pray and go to sleep. Nah, you don't care. See there. Nah. <laughs> I'm going to praise God for the victory. See, people don't understand God's way, but God's way work. The other way don't work. Let's think about it. What changed after you worry about it all night? You, you do. You need some rest the next day, and you need, <laughs> you're tired and wore out from it. You will change, but your situation won't change. The circumstance you face don't change because you worry over it. But if you'll pray about things, because God is committed, say that with me, God is committed to answer the prayers of his people when they pray based upon his promise. He, see, you don't understand it. He made a commitment before you got involved with him that he'll do this for his people if they'll trust him. Faith is one of the most powerful things we have as a believer. After salvation, ain't nothing like faith. Because all faith is, and you see, most Christians miss it because they think, that I don't have enough of it. Yes, you do. The Bible says if you just have it as a grain of mustard seed. So what the Lord is a master at is taking the least to conquer the mighty. And he love it because when you put the least faith or trust in him, he'll take the least you give him and pull the mighty thing down. Now, all faith is, in its essence, is simply this. If you can get this, you're on your way to faith victories, and you'll start seeing more things happen to you by faith than you can wring in your hand, worrying all night, or anything else you do. If you just believe after you pray and trust God that he heard, that he heard you, he'll do it for you. That's all faith is. God, you heard me, and because John said, if he hear you, this is the confidence we have in him, that if he hear us, we have the petition that we asked of him. See, God made it so easy that he said, if I hear you, I do it. But you got to believe that, I, that he heard me and walk away trusting because he heard me, I got it. That's all faith is. That's all faith. And I don't care how big your whatever your issue is, if you put that formula on it, you'll start seeing things that will go beyond your resources, go beyond your connections, go beyond your education. It'll go beyond anything you know in the natural realm. Why? It's God's way. Jesus said, I'm the way. You can trust his way. He is the way. Come on, say it with me. Jesus is the way. And I can trust his way. That's how it works. Now, there will always be opportunities along your faith process to throw in the towel and to give up on it because the devil is a master at working through the circumstances to try to convince you that after God heard you, he ain't answering you. But if he heard you, he answered. That's the Bible. This is your confidence that God say, put your confidence in this, that I love you so much, that I'm so good. That if I hear you, I, I done it for you. Amen. One day I'm going to teach faith in here. All right. So the Bible says she was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him. Came to who? She came to the Lord and asked, Lord, don't you care? that my sister has left me to do the work and by myself, tell her to help me. Now, what, what she saying? Lord, come on in here and worry with us. <laughs> come on and join my worry club. Jesus, wouldn't, Jesus turned the invitation down. Amen. I said Jesus turned the invitation down. But watch this. The Bible said in verse 41, he said, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are, you are worried. I don't know what your, what's your King James say? Careful, that's another word for worry or anxiety. You look it up. Careful, you're full of cares over this. Another nice way to say, you're just worrying up a storm. <laughs> All right. He said, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. What? How many? I'm talking about the needful thing. I should have called that lesson tonight the needful thing. <laughs> there's only one needful thing. Everybody said there's only one needful thing. 
Listen, when you learn the needful thing, you quit worrying in life. When you learn what the needful thing is, it takes worry out of your life. I don't know, I'm telling you. It don't mean that I don't have concerns, but I know the difference between being concerned and worrying over something. Come talk to me. See, concern means I'm giving my attention. I may find that I need to play a role in helping turn the thing I'm concerned about. But worry means all I'm going to get in it and just mess my insides up, take all my peace from myself. Come on, talk to me. My rest, my joy, and all that going to leave because worry is a, is a master thief at taking it from you. Talk to me. You can, work, you can walk the floor all night worrying over something until the sun come up, ain't nothing change. But you. Because everybody, you're going to be mean all day. Amen. But if you prayed all night, I guarantee you, you ain't going to see that problem looking the same way. I guarantee you ain't going to see that problem looking the same way. See, things change when you change how you see it. See, the Lord changes. it. He said, I will when you change. <laughs> you change about it, it's already changed. Glory to God. So don't worry, just be happy. <laughs> All right. So, so he says she chose the what? The needful thing. He said Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Read what your trans, uh, King James said again, fellow. What it says there? Uh, 42? Yeah, 42. For one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good path, which will not be taken away from her. Isn't that something that when you choose the needful thing, the Lord won't take it, and he's saying nothing else is going to take it. No, no one else can take it from you. That's Luke 10, 38 through 42. Amen. We're talking about how to live a worry-free life. How to do what? Live a worry-free life. Let me tell you something. Worry is contagious. People all around you, from where you work at to where you go to, you're going to find opportunity to get in worry with people. Worry over this. Worry over that. Worry with me. Amen. And Jesus said, told us, don't worry. He said, don't be worrying over things. Don't allow anxiety to get in you. Don't be fretting about things. That's what Philippians said, didn't it? He said, the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace, he gave his name, he gave you that name, peace, and he said, it'll surround your mind, it'll surround your heart, and God will keep you at perfect peace, whose mind stayed on thee. Why? Because you trust in him. Peace is a byproduct of learning how to trust in the Lord. Amen. Thank God that you can trust him, too. Let me give you that working definition again for word if you think something nice in it. Listen to what it means. To torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts, fret, to, tor to be tormented with cares and anxiety. Amen. And like I said, there are people who will get mad at you if you don't worry with them. All right. We're told in the scripture that we should cast our anxieties or cares on the Lord. 1 Peter 5 and 7, if you'll turn over there, please. 1 Peter 5 and 7. Casting all your cares. How many? All of them. How, how many of you know people don't like to do what the Lord tell them? Somebody who just don't like to do what the Lord tell them to do. Sure, we, we all know that because here's why. Spiritual things are a little different than natural things. Amen. And somehow or another, we think we can just overlook spiritual things and things will still get better for us. But it don't work that way. The, Lord, the Lord's word ain't suggestions. In God's word is God's wisdom. I don't know how good my English was, but I know what I'm talking about. Whenever God's word come to you, you're getting the wisdom of God. And wisdom, the Bible says, is the stability of the time. When everything, another way to say it, when everything else is collapsing and falling, wisdom will be holding things up where it don't fall. So if you are a wise man or a wise woman, you will apply yourself to the word of God. You will apply what God's word say in any given situation. Why? Because if you do that, you got an edge already. You're operating out of wisdom and not smart. Um, wisdom is superior. The Bible said it is. It's the chief thing, the superior thing. It's the more excellent thing. Why? Because wisdom is another dimension of Jesus Christ. 
Christ is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification. Christ have made unto us. So whenever you start talking about wisdom, you're talking about another name for Jesus. I'll say it again. Whenever you talk about wisdom, you're talking about one of Jesus' nicknames. Come on, help me, somebody. That's one of his nicknames. And you hang out with Jesus, you get wisdom on you. And wisdom is the ability to use knowledge correctly. It ain't just knowing something. It's the ability to do what you know, to implement what you know, to apply what you know. Praise God, in whom all blessings flow. All right? So then... When the Lord tell you to cast your cares on him, if you do it, that's wisdom. Whatever you worry about, well, in words, you say, Jesus, I give it to you. I, I turn this over to you. Actually, it's a prayer called the prayer of committal. What kind of prayer is it? We pray the prayer of faith. We pray intercession prayer. We pray the prayer of agreement. We pray the prayer of praise. But very few people pray the prayer of committal because committal means what it says. You give it to them and you walk away from it. Uh, it's the same way you do, <laughs> same way you do at, at the grave site with a body. You, it's committed. Huh? You ain't going to go back out there, everybody leave and dig it back up. No, you're not. I don't care how much you say you love them. We ain't going to catch you out there digging them back up. Why? They've been committed. And that's what the Lord tells you to do with uh, your cares. With what you've been worrying about, he said, pray the prayer of committal. Say, Lord, here it is in Jesus' name. I walk away from it and I'm not taking it back. He said, all right, you have committed it. I got it. You know what most folks want to do? They say, Lord, I'll let you keep it to tomorrow. I don't see no change. I'm coming to get it back from you. And they take it back from the Lord. What happened? They didn't commit it. And the Lord already know they wasn't committed. He already know you still will the worry than to trust him. So he'll gladly let you take it back and worry two more weeks over it, two more months, and you'll watch it grow rather than remove. <laughs> Lord, help us tonight. Amen. But I'm telling you, this is, this is something believers got to do because sinners worry all the time. And you say, well, when they, they, when they ain't worried, they got some gin or some vodka or something to stimulate their brain and head. Other than that, they're going to worry. Huh? How many of you tried that before you knew Jesus? Huh? Lord, help me here. <laughs> and then you needed something for, for the, after the stimulant that you had. But uh, so casting then, when, you got First Peter 5, 7, read it to me, what it says. Casting how many? All your cares. That means if you cast all of them, who have them? Who have them? God has it, then that means who don't have it? You don't have it no more. So if God have it and you don't, then he say, leave it with me and I'll bring to pass what you trust me to do. All that simple, ain't it? But it works. Huh? There was a lot of people in here tonight, I tell you, look at somebody and tell me it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> it works. Come on. It, it works. This stuff works. So casting so it means say, cast anxiety on God. Say, cast anxiety on God. Another word for casting is a decisive act. A decisive act. You made up your mind. You ain't dubious about it. This is what I, I'm doing. I ain't asking your permission. I'm giving it to God. It's a decisive act. Amen. All right. Also, it literally means, now I don't go, you know, this, this is a very loose definition. You don't have to mess with this because I don't either. It literally means throw it on Jesus. No, I ain't throwing it on Jesus. I ain't going to throw it on Jesus. I hand it to him. I ain't going to throw it on him. Amen. But, but, but I want you to hear it in that. Because, you know, literally, that's what kiss and cast means to throw. When they say the fisherman cast out the, 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 the lure, it means he threw it out there. And it, that scripture told you in 1 Peter, what did it say do? What, what did that scripture say? Cast. Look it up. It means throw. That's what it means. In the Greek, it means throw it. But I ain't going to throw it at the Lord, even though he said throw it. I, I ain't going to throw nothing at Jesus. Come on, talk to me, somebody. <laughs> ah, that's up to you, though. Matthew 11. Let's look over there, please. Matthew chapter 11. 
But it, when you give it to the Lord, he have it. And when he have it, you don't. And he can do with it far more than what you can do with it if you just want to worry all night about it. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11, let's look at verse 28 of that book, and we're going to read in the 30. I'm going to invite you to read out of the, your translation, then I'm going to follow right behind you since I have the NIV. Matthew 11, verse 28 to verse 30. Ready, read, please. Let's stop right here for a moment. Who can take some rest from the Lord right now? Go on ahead and praise him for it. Yeah, because he, he give you rest in your spirit. He give you rest in your mind. And guess what? He'll give you rest in your body. Praise God. So we just receive rest from the Lord because he said we could have it as believers. Amen. He said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. He mean exactly what he said. Thank you, God, for rest over this situation. Amen. You've been worried, but now you're going to rest about it. And you'll see victory now. Go ahead on and finish reading, please. Let's start again at 28 and read all the way in since I got you off that scripture. Start at the beginning. Ready? Verse 28. Praise God for his word. Listen to what the NIV said. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And the believer shall say, all right, now let's look at Psalms 37. Psalms 37, verse 1 here, where it also tells us to worry not. Amen. Worry not. We, we, we've, been, we've been called to leave the lifestyle of worry. And uh, I tell you, you're talking about causing people who want to take note of the God you say you serve. Let them start paying attention that you ain't worrying to a part about things that they all messed up over. That's why I want to know where your strength coming from. Huh? They will want to know. They will, they will inquire. Please tell me, what is it that's keeping you? All right. Psalms 37, verse 1 of that book. You have it? All right. Let's read, please. Read. All right. Now, then we'll go down to verse uh, four, uh, 3 through 5. Ready? Read. Commit thy way. Go ahead. See that prayer of committal. Commit it to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. You say, but you don't know how big this is. It don't matter how big it is. God is bigger than that. Amen. Amen. It don't matter how difficult it is. He can handle it. Huh? It don't not, you said, no, he told us over there in Matthew, burden. And no matter how heavy it's been, he can lift it. I wish somebody heard me on that. Because the devil not put stuff on you and have you, because he'll weigh you down with it and have you all worried and twisted up in a knot almost. But you give that weight and pressure to the Lord, he can hold it and handle it. Amen. Don't worry about how, what he do with it. That's his job. You just say, Lord, you got this stuff here. I gave it to you. I'm going to go somewhere and whistle a little bit. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. I sent a message to the angel and the devil. I don't have this no more. All right, listen to what the NIV says. Psalms 37, verse 1. Do not fret. Everybody say, do not fret. That's another nice word. Don't be all messed up over it. Same thing, worry. Do not fret because of evil men or the envious of those who do wrong. Verse three, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you 
desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Everybody say he'll do this. That's exactly right. That's that this you need him to do. He'll do it for you. All right. Now. So we see then it's not enough to know God. Know what your problem is. It's not enough just to know God. No. But also we need to understand that you must give to him. You must commit it to him. It ain't enough. See, the Lord know what I'm dealing with. A lot of people say that. God know my heart. God, yeah, he know your heart, but he told you to apply yourself to that principle so he can turn it. Amen. So it ain't enough just to say, God, what he don't know. I mean, it really don't make too much sense to say the Lord know. What he don't know is the question. He don't, he know everything. And if I'm going to see something change, it ain't enough to me just walk around and say, well, the Lord know, the Lord know. Yeah, he know, but he said, now give it to me and commit it, what you know I know about. Now that's faith working. All right? That's exactly right. Now look at Matthew chapter 6 for a minute here. Matthew chapter 6. How do we change anything by word? How can we change anything by word? You can't. You can't change anything by word, no way. Not a thing. I don't care who it is, what it's about. Come on, sometimes you feel like if I just worry hard enough. No, what you do is affect yourself when you worry hard. Huh? Cause your blood pressure to go up and all that kind of stuff. Cause sleep to leave you. Talk to me. That's what we're worrying. Get, we're worrying to get the job done for you, but the job is you that it'd be working on. It don't change your situation. And Jesus said it won't. Amen. I'm going to have to teach this on a Sunday so I can have people shouting around here about this stuff. Because <laughs> everybody do this stuff here. Everybody do. I don't care what level of life. All of us have to know how to handle this stuff because it comes to everybody. Isn't that right? But when you get informed, when you know better, you can do better, can't you? So I learned, I don't supposed to worry, I ain't worried about nothing. Because God taught me I don't supposed to worry because all it's going to do is affect me. Now some people think it's a little callous, you're being hard. It ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm doing the word when I choose not to worry. And I'm invoking God to help me now in a way that he really gets involved. Amen. Matthew 6. Let's look please now at verse 25 and we're going to read into 34. We got a nice little stretch here, so we get a lot of good stuff out of this. Jesus is teaching us over here. All right, let's look at verse 24. Listen to what he says. He began by saying, uh, no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will devote to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. That's the first time I ever seen the translation just say speak directly and, and talk about money. Verse 25 is where I need to pick up at. It says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What's your translation saying to King James at verse 25? Take no thought. Take no thought. Well, you have you know you can't worry without letting it take over your thoughts. So that's the primary where you worry. You let your thoughts be overwhelmed with, with, with the concern of whatever it is that's challenging you. Circumstance, situation, loved one, family, body, health. It doesn't matter. Amen. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat or drink, or about, your, or about your body, what you wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in bonds, and yet your heavenly Father feed them. Ain't Jesus a master teacher? He'd take a bird, a sparrow, and show you how well taken care they are without worrying over anything. They don't sow nothing, they don't reap nothing, yet they eat every day. You say, why? God watches over the sparrow. That's why the Psalms say, and I know he watch over me. Talk to me, somebody. Huh? If God going to look out for a bird, he's looking out for you. Bird don't have a soul in it, you do. Amen, a spirit in it, you do. So you got the image of God on the inside of you. No animal have that, only, the, uh, only mankind. So the Bible here says, uh, are you not more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? You ever hear something about worrying about how long they're going to live and got, and got older from it? That's what Jesus said. 
Oh, how much longer I'm going to live? It don't matter. You, you worry ain't going to get you another day, I promise you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, this, this, is, the, this is the Bible. It's true. Uh, you, don't get, you don't get to live longer because you worry all night about how old you are, how long I'm going to be on the earth. It don't get you to hang around any longer. Matter of fact, you can have a bunch of money, it still won't get you to hang out any longer. Because some folks try to buy time, they go, oh, you would be amazed at some of the strange things people have done in the sake of, you know, oh, Lord, I'm glad I'm saved now. Because I would sell them some of that water too from the you. <laughs> <laughs> give me a give me a billion dollars. I'll make sure you live a <laughs> hundred years old. <laughs> Where that water come from? It came from the mountains over there in, 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 in the in the in the place where the monks live. <laughs> Tibet. This water came out of the mountains of Tibet. No human hands have ever touched it. You build press to people to give you the kind of money they give you over a bottle of that water, thinking it'll make them live longer, if you sell it to them right. <laughs> and I'm saved now, but I would sell it to them right. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Because, I mean, you know, if they die, they're going to be able to come back. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna be able to say it didn't work. <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise God. Huh? Folks will buy some sand in the desert, all kind of crazy stuff. Uh, that's human makeup, man. All right. Now, so Jesus said, "Who are you by worrying can add a single hour to his life?" That's verse twenty-seven. Verse twenty-eight. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lily of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his splendor was, was dressed like one of these. If that, if that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So then we see the root problem why people worry, don't we? Jesus gave it, didn't he? What is the problem? It's called little faith. What is it? Faith. See, you, get, you gotta address the root problem or you'll stay there. Whenever you keep worrying over something, I don't care what you think, you, you got a little faith problem right there. You got, a, you got a big God, but you got little faith you're putting in him. And as a result, it's so little, he can't even move. Because listen to me, Jesus said if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed. So whatever you exercise in little faith, it's smaller than a mustard seed. Because he said, I'll take the least and move the mighty. Say it with me. God, when, when mustard seed faith is put in him, he will take the least and move the mighty. That's exactly how he rolled. He'll take the least and remove the mighty thing out your life, that least bit of faith you give him. All right. So he goes on to says, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father know that you have need of them. But seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So that's another insight into worry, ain't it? You worry, worry is always over in the future. Come on, talk to me. You, you're thinking about something that ain't yet happened that you want to happen. Huh? So he said, usually when you worry, you putting your head, you putting your head over in the next day. Here it is, come on Wednesday. But I'm already over in Friday worrying over something. Here it is, Friday ain't even yet. He said, don't put your head all the way over in Friday. You got enough about Wednesday to think on. Every day got more than enough than you to go over into the next day before it even get here, fretting over it. You, you see what I'm saying? Amen. So that's a little insight to help us there. All right. All right, praise God. I got a couple more strips we're going to give you here, and we're going to dismiss you. Let's thank the Lord for this word. Come on, let's thank him. All right, let's look at Luke 12, 
for a moment. Luke 12 and 22. Luke 12 and 22. Luke 12 and 22. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus said. Luke 12, 22. I'll let you read it out of King James and then I'll read it from the NIV when you have it. When you have it, let me know. All right, you got it? All right, let's read. Read that one verse of scripture there, verse 22. Read it, read. All right. Verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Say that with me. Do not worry about your life. All right. What will you eat or about your body? What will you wear? All right. Then. So we see then from this uh, passage of scripture that we just read, Matthew 6, 25 through 34, Luke 12, 22. And of course, Philippians 4 and 6. I want you to go back there again. It is, I must deal with anxiety, fret. No answer will come until I, until I give these things to the Lord. God don't answer you while you're full of worry and anxiety. That's a lot of people pray up, don't realize that, that, that that's all that's holding your prayer up. Sometimes the devil be trying to make you think he holds something up. He really can't. He's defeated. He's too defeated to stop anything God want to do for you. But you can stop it by worrying. God don't answer those prayers while you're worrying over. He can't. He can't do it. You may think he can. He can't. Worry and, and fretting will keep the hand of God over you. But if you want the hand of God to come on you, you start praising him and thanking him, and he'll come, it'll come upon you. Worrying and fretting holds your prayer suspended. It'll suspend the prayer. The angel trying to get it to you and can't because you're worrying. These are spiritual laws. Somebody say, I don't understand that. That's all right. That's why Jesus said, come and learn of me. You've been used to doing it that way before you came to God. Now you come to God and still trying to worry it through. You don't get it worrying. You praise, you, you, you pray about everything and don't worry over anything. That's how you do it. Pray about everything, don't worry about anything. That's all it is. And after you pray, you say, Lord, I believe you heard me. Walk away giving him thanks and don't even touch it no more. When it comes to your mind, don't ask him again. Just say, thank you, Lord. You heard me. I believe you done it. This, this is faith. This get it. This what bring it. <laughs> this what make things happen. Amen. It moved the hand of God. And God is the one who created this system, not me and you. We just called, we, when we came here, it was already in, in motion, wasn't it? And when I got saved, faith was already operating. I just learned how to do it. All right, Amplify, uh, and, and Philippians 4 and 6, and uh, we see that we must deal with anxiety, fret. No answer will come until I do. I have to give the Lord the burden, not, not, every day and once but once not every now and then but once and for all amen i must give the lord my burden say that with me i must give the lord my burdens he commanded me to do so look at philippians 4 verse 6 you must give that to him i don't care what form is in it's your job give it to the lord if it's an issue on your job lord you work with this here now make sure now, let me tell you this. Make sure you ain't violating the spiritual principle on the job. I, you know, you causing problems with everybody and telling the Lord fix everybody. He ain't going to fix you. He ain't going to fix them because you're the problem. Come on, talk to me now. You know, we'll do that in a minute. The devil is a lie. It ain't the devil. <laughs> that ain't the devil there. That's you. <laughs> Philippians. Amen. Now, the Lord, straighten it out. You do your part. He'll handle them. Verse 6. What is it? Philippians 4 and 6. Let your re what? Now, that means give it to him. 
what you need. That's all he's saying. Bring it to me. Give it to me. Turn it over. Leave it with me. Walk away and thank me for it. I like the, the NIV on this. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Lost notice that. Prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Huh? Prayer and petition with what? You got to close it right. Come on, talk to me. Prayer and petition. You know, then after you pray and petition the Lord, you don't walk away like somebody don't hold your head down to pick a barrel for to see how long they can hold you down there. No, it's prayer and petition with thank him for it. Glory to God. That's the language of faith. Lord, thank you. I ain't got to ask you no more. I don't even care how this thing look after that. You got it, Jesus. And the devil tried to make you worry over this start praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord, you got it. I'm not going to pick up that with worry or fretting. Because it's easy. Listen, if you ain't been practicing this, it's you pray, you'll pray up a storm one minute, and the next moment you turn right back around and pick up everything you was worrying over. See, because you ain't used to doing this. We've been groomed by a world that taught us how to worry, how to fret. How to have anxiety. Oh, I, get, I ain't going to, when is I'm going to get, you know, until the point that you worry yourself out of what's already done for you. Huh? Huh? You start getting nervous because it ain't coming quick enough. Amen. That's fretting, see. That was, that's that fretting part right there. No, no, no. I give, I've given this to the Lord, and I want to thank you, sir. You got it. Glory to God. And because I believe you have it, I'm going to walk away thanking you for it. You see, all faith really is, is that you believe God heard you and that you trust what he heard. That's all faith is. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hear us. He see, the Bible says your confidence is in that he heard you. And if he heard you, I got it. I got it. I ain't doubt nothing. I got it because God heard me. Come on, talk to me. It don't matter if no, everybody else can have their fingers in their ears as long as I know God heard me. I got it. Somebody said, if the Lord heard me, I got it. And you walk away with thanksgiving. Your petition is, I prayed the word. You ain't petitioning if you ain't praying the word. Whatever the words say, that's what I prayed about. I've given the word on it. Talk to me. See, if I got a financial problem, if I got a sickness problem, I ain't just praying because out of something I felt. Oh, Lord, I've heard about this. No, no, no. I say, Lord, your word say it. Now I'm petitioning him. I'm coming by a legal document because that's how God operates. So when I go away, thank you, sir. You heard me, and because you heard me, I got it. Now, all God is looking at now, the level of trust I have that he heard me, because that's all faith is. Hmm? I've been talking to somebody I can't see, and I believe he heard me because he said he did. And I walk away acting like he did. Whoo, that's faith in the, in the now that caused the waters to part for you. Huh? Yes, it will. You've been blessed this evening. Come on, give the Lord a good praise. Everybody.